Hello, good morning. Hi. So let's start out in easy seated, just to get ready. When you're here, like always, make sure you got all the flesh back here out of the way. You're really sitting on your sits bones. And once you're sitting there on your sits bones and you come into easy seated, tilt your pelvis forward. It's almost so you kind of sit back and then lift yourself up again. And when you do that, you'll notice your chest kind of raises too. And that's engaging these abdominals. And it's also allowing for you to have more air capacity in your lungs. So just start here. We're just gonna start breathing. So if you will, close your eyes. We're gonna take some deep breaths. When you breathe in, I try and cue the four, six, eight breathing where you inhale for four counts, hold for six and exhale for eight. Whatever feels good to you is great. Just try and make your exhales twice as long as your inhales. And while we're here, really think about being still and stillness because that is what yin is about. Focus on your breathing. Relax your shoulders down away from your ears. Be mindful of your breath and that when you're inhaling, you're filling up your lungs, full capacity, not just shallow breaths from the top, all the way down into your sides. Take a minute here. Slowly bring your arms out to your side, above your head, and down to heart center. And our intent today is to honor the stillness and the answers that come in the stillness and quiet. So, we'll fix this so you guys can see. Here we go. I'm gonna start with our right leg out. So once you bring your right leg out, flex both your feet and bring this left leg closer towards your torso, okay? And then, once you have this, then check back in with your sits bones. Make sure that one hip isn't raising up higher in this. Your right hip can raise up a little bit higher. If it is, place a blanket just under it so that you're level. Try and keep your feet flexed. We're going to raise our arms above our head. And then inhale. Exhale. Check in with your sits bones, make sure everything is level. And on your next exhale, you're going to lean over this right foot. You can do both hands great. If not, you can always leave this arm up. And we're gonna try to bring our foreheads as close as we can to our knee. Be very, very mindful today. If anything hurts, go back to where it feels good. Be mindful of your neck, and your shoulders. And with your right arm close, if it's on your shin, that's fine. If it's on your toes, that's fine too. Bring your left arm up straight into the air. So you really want like this whole side body here. You want to feel the stretch. So once you're here, try and lean on this back a little bit, not too far, but you'll feel that expanse in your rib cage. That's what we want. And then lean over to the side. 
Try and keep your feet flexed, both of them. And you'll feel that stretch in your hamstring, but you also want to feel a stretch here in your obliques and in your back and in your side body here on the left side. I don't know if any of you guys know this or not, but um, I took ballet for 16 years. And in ballet, if you look up like this, that's going to give your alignment. If you can look up and see the crease in your elbow, or you can look up at your hand, just for a moment, and then put your gaze back, it's going to help with your alignment with your arm above your head. Remember to breathe. And on your next exhale, slowly release your hand from your right leg. Bring that back and then drop your left arm. We're going to do the other side. So bring your left foot in to your torso, your, or your right foot, sorry, your left leg out, and keep your feet flexed. Check in with those sits bones, make sure everything's on the ground. And once you're here, we're going to lean over to this right, or to this left leg, sorry, and try and touch both hands close to your toes, feel that stretch. It should be right here in your back, right below your rib cage. On every exhale, if you can, see if you can get your head a little bit, even if it's just a quarter of an inch, a little bit further down from where it was in the previous breath. Remember to try and keep that right foot flexed. And then on your next exhale, lift that right arm. Again, if you want to look up at the ceiling, see if you can see that little crease in your elbow. Look up. You can look back down, definitely, but you really want that side stretch. Check in with your sits bones. Relax your shoulders down from your ears. Again, you know your edge. If anything is painful, stop. You can go back to child's pose. You can go back to easy seated. Whatever feels right is what you need to do. There's zero competition in yoga. And even in this pose, with every inhale and exhale, try to get a little bit closer down towards your knee. Be mindful of your upper torso that it's not slunching over. Really want to be tall and that spine straight. It's going to be curved to the left, but still, you want your back to be straight up. Don't let yourself hunch over. Two more deep breaths. On your exhale, slowly. Bring that left arm back to your torso. Drop that right arm. Bring both feet in together. So the soles of your feet are together and meet. And if you need a block, we're gonna come into a dragonfly. 
And so we're going to be leaning our foreheads over. And if you need a block, you can absolutely do long ways and place your head like that on it. But before we get there, again, check in with your sits bones, ground yourself down, then get your feet, try and mirror them so that big toes, second toes, all the piggies match. And then sit back, breathe, On your next exhale, raise your arms. Inhale up, and we're gonna exhale over. You can drop your elbows to the floor, kind of like I'm doing like this, like just so you have that grounding here. You're still getting the same stretch, but in this, be very, very mindful of your shoulders and your and how close they are to your ears. You want to make sure that you keep you know, this. We're gonna stay here for just a minute. So if you need that block, feel free to use it. And in this, just like we said in our intent, focus on the stillness. The mantra I love is, I'm aware of that which does not serve me. So if you have any wandering thoughts, anything that's preoccupying your mind, it's not helping you right here. Focus on you. Focus on your breath. Every exhale, try get a little bit closer down so that your head is closer towards your feet. The goal is to get your head to where you can rest it in the arches of your feet. Some days it happens for me, some days it doesn't. Today is not one of those days. Find your edge and when you get there, stay there. Be mindful of your shoulders. Remember to take those deep breaths. Two more deep breaths here. On that second exhale, slowly lift your head. Slowly walk your hands back to your legs. And once you are comfortable, however you would like to get into child's pose, that's where we're gonna meet, or tadpole. And then getting into this pose, remember, you want your big toes to kiss. And this tadpole, let's try and do, not a wide, wide leg tadpole, but not child's pose. So bring your legs out, not to the edges of your mat, just inside that and then sink your hips down, bring your forehead to the mat, bring your arms so that palms are up beside your legs, and breathe. And in this pose, really try and center yourself with your forehead on the mat. A 
Allow your shoulders to rest. If you'd like to bind in this, you can. You can bring your hands behind your back here. You can even bring them up. You know what feels good. So don't overdo anything. And it's perfectly fine. Just stay here. Whoever um, has a phone call, would you mind muting your audio? Yeah. Or, sorry. Remember on every exhale, we want to try and sink those hips a little bit closer to our heels. Remember to breathe. This pose is always one that we come back to because we were like this for a long time in the beginning. So this pose should feel somewhat nurturing, familiar almost. Two more deep breaths here. Now your second inhale, exhale, sorry. You're, we're gonna come into rabbit pose. So we're gonna lift our hips. And when you lift your hips, you'll notice that your head already starts to roll forward. Follow that as your body comes up. If you have any neck problems or injuries, stay in child's pose. If you feel any pain in this, be very, very mindful of your neck. And in this, you really want to be on the crown of your head, not on your forehead and not on the temple or way back here, but right on the crown of your head, tippy top of your head. Lift your hips, relax your shoulders. And if you're in this pose correctly, you should not feel any pressure at all on your neck. It should feel more like the supportive part in this pose. We're only going to stay here for a minute. Keep breathing. Two more deep breaths. On that second exhale, come back down to child's pose. Sink your hips back down towards your heels. Let your forehead come back to the mat. Relax your shoulders.
Two more deep breaths here. On your second exhale, bring your hands under your shoulders. Lift your torso up. Bring yourself into tabletop. And when you are finding tabletop, find that neutral spine. And neutral spine is straight spine, but it's not like straight so that it's hurt, hurting anything. It's just that balance. So you're not dipping your belly and you're not going into cat, but it's just right there in between. Make sure that you're not dropping down from your shoulder blades. Bring your right or your left hand underneath the center, and we're going to raise our right hand up. Look at those fingertips if you can, and then we're going to thread the needle through and then sink back on our hips. This is kind of like a modified version of it, it's a little bit more gentle than what we usually do. But in this, try. If you can, instead of being, I'll show you this way, instead of being on your temple like this, really try to sink down so it's your cheek and your ear. And that's going to give that sternocleidomastoid muscle, this muscle that like runs from your jaw to your sternum to your clavicle back here. It's this right here that gets real tense. That's what we're trying to stretch out. So really, really allow your body. And if you need your hips to raise up some, do what feels good. But in this, again, try and really lay on your ear and cheek instead of on your temple. Anything above your ear, try and bring it back down. Check in with your hips. Make sure one's not down. They're not uneven. Remember to breathe. Two more breaths. Slowly on your second exhale, bring that left arm back towards your torso. Easy, easy lift up and come back into tabletop. You can get here. Feel free to move around, stretch anything out. What you feel might need to be stretched for you the other side. Find that neutral spine. And when you do, put your right arm under you, center, lift your left arm high up. Look at those fingertips for a second. And then thread that through. You can have in this position, your right arm, it can be at a 90 degree angle like this. It can be out in front of you, whatever feels good. Just try and make sure that you're on that ear and cheek instead of on your temple. Check in with your hips. Make sure that one's not dipping, that you're not leaning towards the right. And try and keep, whether your arm is at that 90 degree angle or whether it's out in front of you, that right arm, try and keep it centered. And 
breathe. And you'll notice the more you breathe, relax your shoulders, relax your jaw. You start to really, really, really sink down in this pose. And feel that deep stretch in your shoulder, in your back. Go ahead and check in with your hips again. Check in with your toes. Make sure they're on the mat. Check in with your hips. Make sure they're level. Remember to breathe. Remember, even in this pose, try and draw the shoulders back from your ears. And take three deep breaths. After that third exhale, slowly draw right hand back towards your torso. Lift your body back into tabletop. <clears throat> and once you're here, you find that neutral spine. We're just going to do some cat cows. So, find neutral spine, and you can do this definitely at your own breath. You don't have to go with my timing, but we're going to inhale, arch your back, drop your head, hold your breath, and then on your exhale, lift your hips, drop your belly. And when you're in cow, make sure that you bring those shoulders back. Extend your neck. Gaze forward. Inhale, back to cat. Exhale, cow. When you exhale, really try and feel those abdominal muscles relaxing. Because on your cat, you should be contracting that, engaging your core. One more. From here, with your hands already in front of you, if you can, bring each foot behind each hand. And once you're here, heel toe your feet out just a bit. 
and then sink down into Malasana squat. Once you have your balance, then if you would like to, instead of having your hands down here, which is more than fine, you can bring your hands to heart center and gently with your triceps, the fleshy part back here, you're gonna push on the fleshy part here, not your knee. So gently push, you'll see that your legs can extend out for your hips a little bit more. And once you're here, while we're here, I really, really want you to try as best you can, engage your core, straighten your back, and lift your chest, and breathe. If you can, close your eyes, relax your jaw, inhale through your nose and out through your mouth. Slowly on your next exhale, bring your hands back to the ground and slowly lift your hips up. And we're just gonna do a really easy forward fold, heel toes, feet back to hip width distance apart. That's two fists. And once you find that, we're gonna come into ragdoll. So you can have your hands on the ground you can hold your elbows, whatever feels good. Even if you want to rock a little bit, just make sure that you're allowing that slight bend in your knees and the weight of your arms and your head. Pull you down gently. I think I mentioned this the other day. This is a this is a Great stretch for your hamstrings, but this is really, really intended for your spine. So in this, really try and elongate your spine with every exhale. See if you can get your head a little bit lower. You'll still feel it in your hamstring. But allow your spine to be tall, even though we're upside down with it. Long. Right now, gravity is your friend. Keep that slight bend in your knees. Relax your shoulders. Slowly on your next exhale, drop your hands back down. Bring your hands to your shins. And from there, tilt your pelvis. If it's, we figure out where you're at. If you, like me, it's just kind of flat out, tilt it under. And then we're going to start raising our body up. Each vertebrae one by one, arms up tall. I mean, arms up high in the sky. And bring them down to your sides. While you're here, draw your shoulders back. We're just gonna stand here in mountain just for a minute. You're here, lift your toes. And bring them back to the mat. Lift them again. Come back down. And when you lift them the third time, See if you can find those four points of your feet to stand on. So either side of your heel, the ball of your foot, there's two of them. Be mindful of what is grounding you right now. And 
And if you need a pillow for our next pose, um, we're gonna come into recline bound angle. You're gonna put that down on the mat and then we're gonna meet in easy seated. If you need a block, you can even use the block for this too for your head if you'd like. If you don't need anything, then don't use anything. If you wanna put a blanket, anything behind you, but whatever it is, don't have it any further down than right here on your neck. You really just want it for some head support and to be able to allow your neck and your shoulders to relax. So once you're in easy seated and you have your pillow or bolster or blanket, whatever's behind you, bring your feet back to butterfly so that they're together. And then gently allow yourself just to fall back before we bring our arms out, try and bring your heels a little bit closer to your torso. Try and draw them up. And again, try and mirror your feet. Every toe touching its counterpart on the other side. Check in with your hips. We're in this. Try and engage your core so that you are on your sacrum in this and not just Jennifer calls it dumping, but not just letting everything fall down. So you really want to engage your core, even your pelvic floor in this. Then bring your arms up and out to the sides, palms up. And in this pose, relax your shoulders, relax your jaw. And breathe. Remember to try and engage your core so that you can stay on your sacrum. That flat part of your back. So you're kind of lifting your pelvis up, tilting it up. And when you do that, it's helping to engage these ligaments right here in the front of your legs. I'm not sure what these are called. I need to look them up so I know. But doing that is helping these ligaments to stretch out. It's your hip. It's part of your hip. And I can't remember what exactly it's called. I will find out for you guys. So with our palms out, feet together, got our pelvises tilted so that we're on our sacrums. Really try, once you have all that, to try and bring those knees a little bit closer down to the ground with each exhale. Even if it's a centimeter, a millimeter, whatever you can do today, just try. Relax your jaw. Relax your shoulders. And on your next exhale, relax your sacrum and your glutes. And let everything just kind of lay. Be still. Focus on your breathing. Two more deep breaths here. On that second exhale, bring your knees together and bring them up. And when you do that, make sure that when you have your knees in the air, you're still going to rest back on your sacrum. Not on your tailbone or up here 
with your abs, you should feel that flat part. It's almost like a, it, you should feel like everything balances. Once you're here, we're gonna do twisted roots. So you're gonna have your arms still out to the side. So first we're going to do the right side. So bring your left knee over your right leg. You want to twist even where you can and then just drop that down to the side. Make sure your hips are on the ground. If twisted roots is too much for you, the only, the other thing that you can do is just do a gentle side twist to the side. The big thing in this, regardless of what your legs are doing, is that your hips and your shoulder are in a line. So your right hip and your right shoulder should be making a straight line or should feel somewhat straight to you. And with every exhale, try and bring those knees a little bit closer to the earth. Look over to your left fingertips and wave to yourself if you want to. Remember to breathe. This is an intense twist. Two more deep breaths. And on that second exhale, untwist your roots. Bring your knees back to center. Hug them in. Give your back a little massage. You can rock back and forth. Stay here for a minute until you find your center until you feel comfortable doing the other side. Take your time. And then bring your arms back out. We're gonna do the left side, cross your right leg over your left and gently drop. We're gonna be looking at our right fingertips now. And again, you want your left shoulder and left hip to all be in a line while you're here. As close to it as you can get. If you're not there, it's okay. You will be. I'm not there today. Really, really allow your body to sink down into this pose. And again, if twisted roots is too much, do a side twist. Try and get that right shoulder blade to the mat with every exhale and try and bring those knees closer to the ground. Remember to breathe. Two more deep breaths here. On that second exhale, untwist your roots. Bring your knees back to center. Hug them into your chest. 
And while you're here doing this, go ahead and take some deep breaths. When you're ready, drop your feet back down, bring them to the bottom of your mat to center. Bring your hands behind your head, clasp your, or interlace your fingertips and rest those behind your head. In this, be mindful of your shoulders that they're down from your ears, adjust what you need to. And we are going to come into banana pose. So gently heel your heel toe of your feet, not heel toe, walk your heels out towards the right. If you'd like to cross them, you can. And then we're going to bring that right elbow over. You know your limit, you know your edge. This is an intense side stretch. You should feel this all the way down your left side. Through your ribs. Into your hip. Really try and ground down with that right heel into the floor. Remember when you're breathing to make your exhales twice as long as your inhales. Relax your jaw. Two more deep breaths. After that second exhale, walk your heels back to center. Bring your head back to center. Lay here just for a second. Adjust your shoulder blades, whatever needs to be done so that we can do the left side. And whenever you're ready, walk your heels out to the left. Cross your right ankle over your left foot if you can, and then gently, with your shoulders still drawn away from your ears, we're gonna bring our elbow so that it's closer to our feet than it was. Be mindful of your hips in this, that both are still on the ground. When you breathe, allow that deep stretch in your side body. Really try and ground down with that left heel. Two more deep breaths here. On that second exhale, when you're done, walk your heels back to center. Release your hands from behind your head. 
find center on your mat. Raise your knees. We're going to come into happy baby before we go into Shavasana. So with happy baby, bring your legs and feet up in the air, flex those feet, and then reach on the insides of your knees, but you're going to hold the outsides of your feet, just with your fingertips. And in this pose, see if you can stay on your sacrum and draw those knees down to the ground. If you'd like to rock back and forth, sometimes that feels good. And gently, when you're ready, drop your feet down to the bottom of your mat, bring your toes together so that they touch and then let them fall as they will to each corner at the bottom of your mat. Your hands, you can have your left hand over your heart, your right hand over your belly. Feel your breath and have them beside you wherever feels good. Close your eyes, relax your jaw, focus on your breathing. Focus on being still. While you're here, just want us to think about some things. And I've written some stuff down. Be still in your body and mind. A lot of people think that stillness is empty. Sometimes when we're silent and we're still, we have more answers than we've had when we were active. Stillness is not empty. It's full of answers. Breathe and really listen to your thoughts. You know yourself better than anyone else. Follow your intuition. Give yourself grace more than you give others. Our practice of yin yoga is to learn to be still while holding these poses. And in that stillness, you have the ability to shape yourself into the pose. And when you find your edge, honor that, even in Shavasana, honor this time for yourself and be still. Think of the night sky, think of the moon, the stars. Allow the same stillness in your mind. Allow yourself to relax. Let go of that which is not serving you. We're still, we create a space to listen to our inner wisdom, our body, our mind, and spirit. Allow yourself to relax and to be still. Allow your mind to relax today, even while you're active. Be mindful of chaos in your mind, especially that that does not serve you. Relax your body. You're strong and to remain strong, 
we must rest. Relax and allow the stillness to calm your mind and your body. Remember, stillness isn't empty, it's full of answers. Gently begin to wiggle your fingers, your toes. ankles and wrists, knees and elbows. And when you're ready, roll to your favorite side. And when you're ready, meet me in easy seated. No rush, you take your time. Once you're here, bring your arms out, overhead one more time, straighten out your spine, hands together to heart center. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.